Welcome to the channel. Today we are going to be replacing the rear main seal on this 2000 BMW K12 LT. I'm going to go through this as fast and as thorough as possible. So if you have any questions, please mention it in the comments below. And also don't forget to like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and check the link in the description for my Patreon if this video helped you out. To get your bike to this point, you're going to have to remove your gas tank, your radio, and both of your side panels. I will put a video right here. All right, next step, we'll take a six millimeter Allen and loosen up these six right here. And then once we have the right side uh, driver's foot peg off, we're gonna have to take off the rear master cylinder here and the brake light switch. In order to take off the rear master cylinder, you need two five millimeter Allens, a uh, four millimeter Allen to take off the brake switch here. And then we're gonna do the same thing on this side with a six millimeter Allen and then these six screws right here. And then there's a clip behind here to take this linkage off for the shifter. So you just have to twist it out of the way and then it pulls straight down. It's a little clip. Then this just comes right off like that. Next what we'll do is take off these two Allen head screws right here and here to take off the rear seat. Next thing we'll do is remove this grab handle. In order to do so, there's a five millimeter Allen head bolt down in this hole. And then there's a five millimeter Allen head that you might not be able to see, but it's right here on the inside. And then to get these panels off, we'll open up our saddlebag and there's T25 here, two T25s here and here, and then one T25 down here. Next, we're gonna remove our battery. In order to remove our battery, we're gonna need two 10 millimeter wrenches and then a Phillips screwdriver to undo this top part. Next, we'll take our rear wheel off. In order to take the rear wheel off, we're gonna to have to undo both these T25 Torx bits and the 17 millimeter nuts on the wheels. Next, we'll take off our rear brake caliper and our rear wheel speed sensor. In order to do so, you're gonna need a eight millimeter Allen wrench to undo the caliper and then a four millimeter Allen wrench to undo the wheel speed sensor. In order to remove the final drive unit, you're gonna need a 16 millimeter socket, a 16 millimeter wrench to undo this bottom bolt, and then you're going to, and then you're gonna need a 30 millimeter uh, socket and a 12 millimeter Allen key. The 12 millimeter Allen key is for this, and there's another one of these on the other side, and then the 30 mils for the locking nut 
on the other side. All right, so now we'll be, we'll be removing this rear swing arm. In order to do so, we're gonna use a 14 millimeter wrench and a 14 millimeter socket to undo this top shock bolt, a 30 millimeter socket to undo this. There's a little clip inside of here that needs to be picked out with a screwdriver or a pick and kind of get under it. And then on the other side, you loosen up the, take the clip out, undo this 30 millimeter nut and then on, with a 12 millimeter allen undo this bolt right here So the next step is going to be taking the exhaust system off. So to take the exhaust system off, we're gonna need a internal Torx like that. It's, a, it's called an E16. And then we're also going to need a long six millimeter Allen. There's a mount for the exhaust right under here. And then the exhaust heat shield over here is held on with a five millimeter Allen right there. Okay, next we're gonna be taking out these three screws right here with an eight millimeter Allen. There's three on this side and three right here. Next, we'll pop this clip out right here that's holding um, this little linkage on. So if we get a little screwdriver, right there. Then you can pop this little ball joint off there to free this up. Then pull this whole piece out. Next, we'll be taking these two bolts off right here. It's a six millimeter Allen here and right here on both sides. The next thing we'll do is take off both of these radiator fan shrouds. So there's a three millimeter Allen right up here, and then another one down below here. We'll have to unplug your fan here. It should just pull right out. You'll have to finagle it around a little bit. And then this wire goes through that hole. Next step, we'll take off our air box. To do so, we're gonna use a five millimeter Allen for here, just a Phillips screwdriver for up top here on the air box lid, um, and then a seven millimeter socket for this nut up here. So 
So now on this side, we're gonna be taking off the air box, undoing all these connections. This part's a little bit tricky. What I like to do is use a silver Sharpie. And when I unplug these connections, you know, put a number one right there and then a one right there. So we know to match number one up to number one, just to kind of, when we go back together, get an easier idea of where things go. So in the air box up here, we can call this one a, a two and then two and so on. There's a ground wire that connects to the throttle bodies and that's just a Phillips screw. So our whole harness will be up here. And then we can undo the spark plug cover here with a five millimeter Allen, unplug all the wires and then set it off to the side. And then using two 10 millimeter wrenches, you can get this coil box off. A bolt way back there, a bolt and a nut way back here that holds it on. Next step, we'll undo our radiators. So there's this little clip right here that you'll just pull the clip up and then pull the washer out. And then another one on the inside right here. You got one right here, one in here, and then one in here. And then you can take some just uh, lubricating oil. And then we're gonna wiggle our radiators off of these little pegs. So you'll just release the radiator so it's just held up by the radiator hoses. We don't need to physically take the radiators off, but we do need to release them from the brackets here. So, uh, next thing we'll be doing is removing the uh, skid plate under here, the center stand, and the side stand. So first thing we're going to want to do is unplug the side stand switch here. So you'll follow this wire up, and it's going to be this plug right here. And then we're going to jack the bike up underneath the oil pan. And then we're going to use a 13 millimeter wrench to undo these bolts on both sides. And then we'll use our eight millimeter and undo the both eight millimeter bolts on the bottom of this right here. And then we'll use the same eight millimeter wrench to undo the four bolts holding the center stand on. All right, so next thing we're gonna do is with a five millimeter Allen, we're gonna remove our clutch slave cylinder so there's three aluminum fasteners holding that on. And then we'll use a pry bar here and get it underneath this drive shaft. And you can just kind of get it in there and pop it right out. So now we're going to take our gear indicator off. So to do that, you're going to use a pliers and just compress the those two prongs together and then it should just pull straight out. Just like that. Next, we'll be taking our reverse selector off. In order to do that, you're going to need a five millimeter Allen. There's two five mils right here and here. And then you're going to use a six mil and the six mil is actually one of the transmission bolts and that's right here. So now the next step, this one's pretty difficult, is there's some electrical connections. There's a plug right here 
on the top of the alternator. There's a plug, the little blue wire down here. You can barely see that on the camera, that little blue wire. That is a plug that plugs into the alternator. And then on the starter, there's two nuts. So there's one right here. And then there's another one up back there. So you have to undo both those nuts on the starter, which are 10, a 10 millimeter nut, and then the one on the alternator, which is a 12 mil. So next thing we're gonna be doing is just kind of working your way around the transmission, making sure that there's absolutely nothing that's connected to the transmission that isn't unplugged. So if you've followed along so far, um, nothing on there should be connected still. All the wires up here that were on your battery and alternator and starter, all of these plugs are all undone. Um, on your starter in there, there's no wires connecting it. On the behind the transmission here, your slave cylinders out, your gear indicators out. Um, yeah, make sure nothing's connected. This is unplugged. So the transmission should be ready to come out now. Um, another thing you're gonna wanna do is just make sure everything's kinda out of the way. So what we're gonna be doing is undoing this nut, not totally, but just loosening this nut, or sorry, this bolt, removing the bolt that's in here, and on the other side, loosening this bolt, uh, bolt up as well. So then we're gonna support the back of the bike and lift up the back of the bike just a little bit and then use the jack stand here and then lower down the motor so the motor will still be mounted up here. All the radiator hoses will stay connected. The fuel rail and throttle bodies will all stay connected um, and then we'll just tilt the motor down and then we'll be able to just pull the transmission straight out of the back. The bolt right here, where we're gonna be pivoting the motor down on, which is an eight millimeter. We're just gonna loosen this up just, just enough. See how this washer in here now is loose? So this washer's loose. We're gonna to wanna to just loosen it up to that point on both sides. So we'll go over here to this side. You can see the bolt right here. We're just loosening it. There's a nut on the inside there, but we don't need to worry about that. We just wanna make this just so it can pivot down on this. So as long as it's loose like that. Right here, there's a nut right there and that's an 18 millimeter. So we're gonna to wanna to put a wrench onto that. And then on the other side, 10 millimeter Allen All right, so now that we have both of these front pivot bolts loose and the rear motor slash transmission mount right here removed, our engine hoist is hooked to the frame there and our motor is supported with a jack stand. So now we're gonna be lifting up on the engine hoist here as well as lowering this down. So, what we're gonna be doing is, you can see, I'm pulling the frame off the transmission here. So you can see up there how we have nothing connecting, no wires. It's just 100% open. Our radiators are still have a bunch of slack in them. Let's go check around the other side. Our radiator's nice and loose here. Our throttle bodies and everything can just stay right there, all connected. The fuel rail, all that can just stay connected. Our coils are just here hanging. Our slave cylinder is just off to the side hanging. Our wiring harness is just coiled up on top of the motor here. And then looking around and under here, 
it's all wide open. So we'll just keep moving it down slowly but surely, constantly checking, making sure everything's okay. Okay, the next step, we're going to be working our way around the transmission, loosening up all of the six millimeter transmission bolts that bolt the transmission to the bell housing. And then the reason we're in here is if you look, we got a main seal leak. See the oil right here? So the next step is all these six millimeter bolts around the clutch plate here. You're gonna wanna, wanna undo all of them. Now we need to take this big nut off in the center there that bolts to the crankshaft. So in order to do that, we're just using an impact with a 30 millimeter socket. So just like that. And then behind that, there's this little collar that pushes an O-ring in down in there. So there's an O-ring in there, so this will not just pull out all nice and easy. There's an O-ring blocking it in there, so we need to get that O-ring out. So in order to do that, we're just gonna kind of work this back and forth until you see that O-ring kind of roll out of there. And when you're doing this job, this collar and this O-ring should both be replaced. So we're gonna kind of work this out and then we can see it just barely protruding. Then we're gonna use this little 90 degree pick just and then uh, kind of just stab into the side of it and pull it right out. And now that we have our O-ring out, this whole piece will just kind of slide right out. So what we're gonna do is uh, take a drill bit and put a very, uh, just a small hole right inboard of the seal. Be careful, very, very careful not to scratch this surface. We're just gonna put a hole in it and then drill a wood screw into that and I'll show you, the, show you what's next after that. All right, so now we have a very small hole right there. We're gonna take a wood screw and then thread it into that hole just enough so it grabs the seal. Make sure not to go in too far where it hits anything on the other side of the seal. So now we got the seal out. You can see what I did. I had the screw threaded in there and then I was prying on the bottom of the pliers here against the side to kind of use the leverage to pull it out. So now we're just gonna clean up this whole bell housing area just with some brake parts cleaner. So for now installing the main seal, what we're gonna do, you can see on this piece right here that you took out, we're gonna use this as our main seal driver. So there's a little a disc on here, a little stop disc right there, plastic. That should be removed. And then with just this piece, we're gonna make sure on the surface right here, on this surface where the main seal rides up against, we're gonna make sure this is free, free and clear of any debris, um, any scratches in it that may have caused the leak initially. So felt side out. We'll be installing this onto here. You can see how it is right there, right on there. So then we'll install this, slide it right on those splines, and then we'll use a socket and put it on the outside of here, and then just pound it in 
until it bottoms out. Inch and a half socket, so it fits right there nice. And then this is splined into the crankshaft, and then the seal is seated on where it rides on this surface. So we're just gonna pound this in until it stops. And what you want is the seal to be flush with the machined surface on the crankcase. So we'll see where, where we're at. Pull this out. So now you can see the new main seal is perfectly flush with the outside of here. So you can kind of feel with your finger. It should be just perfectly flush around the outside. We're gonna be putting this with a brand new little stop disc there. This goes on to here. There's no particular orientation for that. So let it go into there. You can feel it kind of push over that seal. You got a brand new O-ring with a little bit of lube on it. it goes over the threaded section here. And then just kind of be careful not to cut this O-ring. You want to kind of roll it in there without pinching it. Kind of if you can do it by hand. Don't use anything sharp like a screwdriver. Here we got another brand new little bushing here. So then this bushing, the that side on top there, that side goes in. So the shiny side, the shiny side out. So we're gonna just push this in by hand and that's gonna kind of push that O-ring in. So we can see our O-ring is nice and seated in there, not pinched or rolled over. So reinstall that. And then after that, we'll put our nut back on. Spin that on by hand. So first piece that goes in is this little part right there. And after that, we put the spring in. After that, we have our pressure plate right here. And you can clean this surface up with uh, some sort of degreaser or brake cleaner. And then our clutch, which we're gonna put this side facing outward, so like that. So you can see one side kind of protrudes like that, and the other side's pretty flush right there. So we're gonna go this side out. So now this, we'll go over this. So right there, it's all lined up and it'll all snap together. Make sure this is in and seated. And then you can loosely install all your screws around the clutch. And then we'll use a six millimeter Allen and just work our way around slowly, seating all these screws. If there's any sort of resistance, do not force it. Something's probably binding or your alignment pegs aren't aligned. You know that we got all those tightened, tightened up. This should be able to spin freely. This should just pull right out. So basically what this is doing is replicating your push rod and then this piece is dead center in your clutch. So when you go to put your transmission on, your transmission input shaft will line up perfectly in these splines and then your bolt holes around here won't be off. And then you must make sure that you have these alignment pins. Without this alignment pin, those two, there's a chance that your transmission won't be perfectly aligned when you put it all together and you'll have a severe vibration. All right, now that we have our clutch and main seal and everything all reinstalled and torqued up, next thing we're gonna do is install the transmission. So you're gonna to wanna to put a little bit of spline grease on your clutch splines, and then we'll slide our, lift our transmission up, and it should just, we can twist the output shaft on the transmission a little bit to twist the input shaft until you feel the splines engage. And once the splines engage, it should just pop right in. 
you have to be a little cautious because the starter um, is still attached to the transmission and the starter has a gear that it also needs to engage into. So don't force it and do definitely do not use the bolts on the transmission to pull the transmission into it because you'll wreck something. So the starter here is going to engage up in the hole up there and then this shaft, the input shaft on the transmission is going to spline into the clutch. So boom, you can see it just kind of dropped right in. So now we're just gonna work around the transmission, putting in all of the transmission bolts. All right, so now that we have our bolt, bolts back in, you have to remember there's this one. This one right here is gonna be empty because that's where our reverse actuator mounts to. There's one right there, here, here, here and right there. Next thing we're gonna do is install our push rod. So one side is shaped like that and the other side is shaped like that. The slave cylinder goes on this side. So we're gonna install this side first. And that just goes right down that hole. Should slide right in, no issues. I'm gonna be lifting the engine up here while I'm doing this, I'm going to tr make sure I'm not lifting the bike up because these should be moving independently. And when I get to a certain point where the wires for the alternator stud up here can reach for the wires on the harness, I'm going to put the alternator wire and the starter wires on. So we're just going to keep slowly going up and while we're doing this, we're going to Continue looking around, making sure we're not pinching anything, making sure no wires are getting pinched, no hoses are getting pinched, anything that's gonna cause you problems down the road. So up in here, there's a starter stud right there, and there's a stud right here. The ground is gonna go on the stud closest to the battery, and then the power is gonna go to the stud that's on the body of the starter. And then for the alternator, there's only one one peg where the positive will go and then there's a little prong that a plug's going to plug into so once you got this up high enough where you can get those on you're going to want to do that so first thing i'm doing is connecting the ground onto the starter and then just loosely threading that nut on there so we'll throw our starter positive starter wire on there and then we'll put our, see if we can get our alternator ground on there. And then remember the alternator one had this little plastic cap on it. So make sure you include that so you don't accidentally short anything out. So I got those all on. And then there's a little blue wire with a plug on it that just kind of snaps into the alternator, but it looks like we're gonna have to lift the bike up a little bit more before we can get that on. So now we're going to continue to lift the engine up until this hole right here is aligned with the hole in the frame and we can throw our bolt through. All right, now that we've lifted our engine up and we got it aligned so you can see clearly right through the frame, through your tran transmission mounts and right to the other side, we're going to put our bolt, our transmission mount bolt through just like that. So you should be able to use your thumb, kind of just push that through there. So now that that's all the way through, we're gonna go around to the other side and put this nut and washer on. So right here is the other side of the threads of that big bolt. So we're gonna throw the nut and washer on and then we'll torque that up. So I got a 10 millimeter Allen attached to a six inch extension, put in the frame until it gate engages into the transmission bolt. And then on the other side, a 
in here. You're gonna need a 18 millimeter wrench. Put it on the nut in there and kind of reach around and torque that up. All right, now that our transmission's all bolted in, we're gonna use a wrench and torque up those three studs on the starter, two on the starter, the one on the alternator, and then we'll plug in the one stud on the alternator. All right, so now our next step is going to be getting the gear indicator switch right here, back in there. So what you do, you can see this is kind of shaped like a D and you're gonna wanna collapse these two with the pliers like that. And again, don't force this, it'll only go together correctly one way. So boom, it's in just like that. Should be able to not be able to pull that off if everything's engaged properly. And on your slave cylinder, what you really wanna look for is on this end, this should be dry. If your slave cylinder is leaking, that will more than likely cause a main seal failure. What's gonna happen is your slave cylinder is gonna leak brake fluid, and then the brake fluid is gonna make its way down the push rod here. It'll kind of just trickle down the push rod and eventually make it down to the main seal. And when it makes it to the main seal, the brake fluid's gonna eat up the main seal, causing it to leak. So if that's leaking, you're gonna to wanna to replace that. And then using a five millimeter, we'll tighten these all up. The next thing we'll do is our water temp sensor here gets routed through, comes right here, gets pushed through that metal piece right there, and then plugs in right here. Now we will get our coils put back on. So you got your bolts here. So one bolt goes through this and the other bolt goes through up here. So this is kind of a pain to get at. There we are. And this one down here. And then we'll put all of our spark plug wires back on. And on here, all of them are labeled. So on the wire here, you can see that there's a number two right there. This is, has a one on it, so that's cylinder number one. So it's one, two, three, four. From the front, all the way to the front is number one. And then towards the rear is number four. So number one goes there. Number two kind of wraps around number one like that and goes right there. This is number four, it says right there on the wire. Number three goes straight in there like that. And then again, number four kind of wraps around number three and goes in like that. And all the cables are routed so the wires are on the bottom. So let's kind of tuck all our wires up in there. We'll take our cover, put that on right like that. And then with a five millimeter Allen, work around the cover, putting all these bolts in. Now we're gonna work on getting this big bundle of wires getting everything plugged in where it needs to go. So remember there's this one little ground wire right here that goes on to the throttle body on the screw right there on number four. You can't forget about that one. And now is also a good time if you wanted to, to clean out your throttle bodies. Very meticulously just kind of work down all the wires. So we got cylinder number four, cylinder number three right there. This right here goes to your cruise control. This is cylinder number two. So that will go there. We got our fan wire here, but we don't want to plug this one in yet until we have our fan shroud on. This one right here is for our air box that goes up here for our air intake temperature sensor. This one here is for our solenoid on our uh, EVAP container. Um, this right here, we deleted our EVAP container. So this will just be left blank. And then this big one right here goes onto this unit right there. And then you want all these wires routed all nice. So just be kind of meticulous on how you route it. Make sure none of your wires are 
going to get in the way of your throttle valves. So after you have the wire harness on, and then we'll zip tie it down to the fuel rail. Um, if need be, we'll kind of reroute it so it's if it's binding with anything, we're gonna to have to kind of unplug and reroute it. So right now I can tell that this harness I got going under this cruise control cable, and I'm gonna fix that so it goes between those two cables. And that should be good. So now we're gonna hook up our ground cable here. That ground wire here is very important. Without it, you're gonna have all sorts of issues. And then this big long four pronger is going to go under to the potentiometer on the far right side of the throttle body. And again, just kind of be cautious and uh, pay attention to detail on how everything's getting routed around. This one right here goes to our power plug on our panel, and this goes to our gear position switch. So our gear, gear position switch right here, we're just going to, or our reverse switch, I'm sorry, I'm going to route it up here. Make sure it's not binding with anything, and then plug that in right there. So we got all our wire harness here, is all installed and zip tied up all nice. So now we're gonna torque up our motor mount here that we pivoted the motor on. So we're gonna use a 15 millimeter wrench and then an eight millimeter Allen socket. Kind of have to fish the wrench down on the backside to get a hold of that nut. And once you got a hold of it, Make sure you're not torquing it and uh, the wrench isn't pushing up hard against the throttle body. So now on this side, there isn't a nut on the other side. So you're just gonna torque this up with just the eight millimeter Allen. So now we're gonna put our radiators on. So the radiators have these little pegs here with these uh, little clips and washers. So just like we took it apart, we'll take a little bit of oil, which is gonna help get those um, pegs kind of engaged into those little rubber rubber bushings and then don't want to force this or break one of those pegs off because you're going to be buying a new radiator and then you put a washer on and then you put a clip through and then there's one on the inside here we'll do the same thing to the left side put a little bit of oil on these rubber bushings so this just kind of falls into there so the washer on there and then the clip And then our clip. So now we're going to be installing our air box. So you want to, you have all your wires here and stuff, and you want to just kind of actuate your throttle. Make sure none of the wires are interfering with the um, movement of the throttle cables. Make sure you can hear that switch activate when you roll your throttle forward to cancel your cruise and just kind of. Make sure everything's moving smoothly. So I just noticed right here, I have a cable routed over my cruise cable here. So when I cancel the cruise, the cable's kind of chafing on each other there. So I will resolve that. So we got all this done. So now we'll take our air box. <clears throat> and I put a little bit of oil on the inside of here, some lubricating oil. So it slides over the throttle bodies nicely. And then this should just kind of line up and just drop down like that. And now we're on. And then this one right here is going to go up, plug up right here. Now on the opposite side of our airbox, we're going to want to make sure this tube slid into our airbox nice. Right here, we're putting our five millimeter bolt with our big fender washer. Put our air filter down in there and our cover back on. And then we have this little screw, which is a seven millimeter that goes right here to kind of hold these two pieces together. Now we will put our radiator fan shrouds on. So again, just be kind of cautious on how you do this and make sure you're not pinching any wires. There's this fan wire here. So this right here goes over it like this. 
and that fan wire goes through this little slit right there. So you kind of have to put that wire through there, and then this thing will just slide right on. And then this side's a little trickier, but it's the same concept. Kind of have to finagle this around the fuel rail there, but again, do not force it. So you can see how I'm along this, I have both cruise control cables routed in this clip and they're kind of navigate around. They don't touch anything on the harness. Now we will focus on getting this piece on. So it's just those two six millimeter fasteners on each side. Um, pretty much only goes on one way. So we'll just tighten this up there. Should all go together finger tight. Make sure you're not pinching any wires between anywhere. And then we'll do the same thing on the right side. And then this plug right here goes right in there. So we'll plug in our transmission speed sensor right here that comes up off the transmission, gets routed behind the frame here, and then plugs in. We also have our uh, rear brake light switch. So we'll route that up following the transmission speed sensor. Plug that in right behind here. And then we have our fuel pump plug here, which we'll hold off on until we get the tank on. And then a power socket here, which this model does not have the socket on this side. Now we're gonna put our transmission uh, reverse linkage in. So if you remember before, this is the one of the transmission bolts. These two bolts, go in these two holes here and then this wire is going to be routed underneath here around and then through this clip here and then these two little rubber things are going to get kind of engaged into the pins up here so now we're going to be putting on our center stand and our kick stand so when we're doing that you get to remember this plate here for your uh, side stand switch cord so that goes on just the way you took it off make sure the wire for your side stand switch here isn't getting pinched between the plate otherwise when you torque it up there's a chance your bike won't run because your side stand side stand switch will be off side stand switch wire is not getting pinched anywhere because if it gets pinched, you're gonna run into some issues. So now we're gonna set the bike down on the ground. So now we're gonna route our side stand switch under in that little bracket that we put up. You're gonna to wanna to zip tie this wire over out of the way so it's not uh, anywhere near the exhaust. Up through here, following your other wire harnesses. And then it'll plug in just like this. So to put your skid plate on, you have this piece right here these two bolts that go on the oil pan right here and then these two long um, bolts with eight millimeter heads those thread in underneath the center stand here now we're going to zip up our slave cylinder um, bleeder tube so we'll just go up behind the shock here again kind of like we've been doing this whole time just pay close attention to where we're, what we're chafing on. And so now we are going to be putting our rear drive shaft on. So in order to do that, it's very simple. Line up the splines, feel them drop on just like that. And then just take a mallet or something and just give it a little tap. You should feel it drop right on. So you can, now you won't be able to pull this off. As hard as you pull on there, you shouldn't be able to pull it off. So that's done. 
So now we will slide our swing arm just right up this drive shaft there. And it should just kind of pop right in there. And then you got your, your rear shock bolt that goes through here. So to, in order to hold the swing arm up, we'll just uh, shove our rear shock bolt through there without actually tightening it yet, just like that. And then we'll throw our, just loosely thread our nut on and be sure not to forget to tighten that. With a little bit of grease on the threads, we'll take this piece on the left side with a 14 millimeter hex end and we'll get that kind of lined up in there and just get it started. We'll head around to the other side and do the exact same thing. With a little bit of grease on the threads, line this up in here and then get it started. And then the outer edge of this bolt pivots inside here so we just want to get it in there so it you can see right in there where it pivots right there and then next we'll take this piece again with a little bit of grease on the threads thread that in there and then the flat part in there is going to ride on that bearing Got that one going. Head around to this side. And this side uses a 30 millimeter hex. And again, with a little bit of grease on the threads, we'll just get that started in there. So the left side plug here is actually preloading the bearings. So we do not want to tighten this one down like we did the other one. We're going to put this on and that's a 30 millimeter hex on the end of that and that's going to be your lock nut. And then there's this retaining clip here to prevent it from coming out. And then also, do not forget to torque the rear shock bolt. So next, we'll be putting in this piece right here, the little frame brace. So that just kind of slides up in here. It fits kind of snug, just right about there. And then we have three bolts with eight millimeter Allen heads on both sides. And then on here, you need to remember your little ball joint here for your uh, shift linkage. That attaches up here, and then there's that little clip on there. So you're going to have to snap that ball on. You can hear that really positive snap. And then we're going to put this clip through. That little vertical peg goes up, and then it wraps around the base of the ball. So now we're gonna be installing the rear drive housing. So what we wanna do is you can see your drive shaft in there. We're gonna kinda of wanna visually line this up. Make sure your, both of your bearing races are in here. These bearing races come out like that. So make sure both of them are in there. And we're gonna kinda of Align that up visually, spin the brake disc and the splines will, you'll feel the splines engage and then the splines engage, you'll just kind of slip it up in there. Just like that. We'll take this plug. We'll switch over to our 30 millimeter for the lock nut. We'll seat that down. Now we're going to put the hose clamp for our rear drive boot on. 
Then we're going to install our brake, rear brake caliper, and our wheel speed sensor. So now we're gonna put, use an eight millimeter Allen to install our rear brake caliper. And then we're gonna use a four millimeter Allen to install our rear wheel speed sensor. And then we're gonna clip our brake hose right back up into these clips. And then make sure our brake rotor is not interfering with any of the hoses or wires. So to put our exhaust on, what we're gonna do is on the end, on the muffler, there's a little peg that slides into the rubber bushing. So we're gonna slide that in up there first. And then we're gonna wanna make sure that the bracket that holds by the, holds the muffler by the O2 sensor slides into the, into the bracket there. We won't worry about the O2 sensor quite yet. And then um, we're just gonna slide this. It'll go together really easy one way. So just don't avoid forcing it. And then these all go up like that. And then our one Allen with a six millimeter Allen head goes in, um, on the exhaust by this bracket here. So with an E16 external Torx, we will tor torque up our exhaust studs. And then with a 16 millimeter wrench, we're gonna torque up the exhaust bracket right down here. So now we can plug in our mass, or sorry, our O2 sensor on our exhaust. Make sure it's not binding in your linkage or anything. And then that. So now we're gonna put our exhaust heat shield on. So in order to do so, we're gonna use the two, these two bolts with five millimeter heads that go on right up here underneath your left saddlebag. And then just make sure these three holes are aligned and then you can tighten up these two on the end. So now we can put our rear wheel on. Don't forget about this ring that goes on the inside of your rim. And then we'll put our rear mud flap on. So now we're gonna put our right footboard on with our brake. So on the back side, we have our two five millimeter um, Allen head screws that hold the um, rear master cylinder down. And then we have this piece right here that needs to be put up the master cylinder there. We'll tighten those up. And then our rear brake light switch right here. You need to kind of depress the rear brake, thread the switch underneath this bolt right there, underneath that bolt head. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. Put it underneath there. And then the two holes are gonna engage on those two pegs on the foot plate. And all this does is it's a retainer to hold that down. So that's a four millimeter Allen. Make sure these are all routed out of the way, not gonna get pinched or anything. This goes around and then you got your three six millimeter head bolts that hold this foot plate on right here. Now we'll put on our left side foot rest. So you have your shift linkage here. You need to pull your clip out. And just like we did earlier, so you should hear a very positive snap when that gets on there, just like that. Now we'll put our left side panel on. So just like we took it off earlier, kind of just gets put in here. This little trim piece needs to get lifted up, goes under there. So now we'll put on our uh, grab handle here. So it uses the two five millimeter head 
Allen screws. So now on the right side, we're gonna put this panel on. Same way we did it on the other side. Open up your saddlebag. Lift it up on this, it kind of just gets fished in there. And then four torque screws. And then we'll put on our right side passenger peg. So now we're gonna put on our left side passenger peg. So now we'll put our battery in. Be sure you put it in the correct way. So the positive goes to the positive and then the negative goes to the negative. And you're gonna wanna hook your positive wire up first. That way, if your wrench arcs out onto the frame, it's not gonna short the battery out. And a ratcheting wrench works really well for this. And then we'll put our battery caps back on. And then this piece from before, this is held on with a Phillips screwdriver. You're gonna need a long reach Phillips screwdriver to get this piece on. And then we'll put our rear seat on. All right, thank you so much for watching my video. I'm gonna go ahead and put the uh, rider seat back on, the gas tank back on, the radio back on, and all the other remaining body panels in a time lapse right here. Thanks so much again for watching. Have a safe ride.